My dearly beloved in Christ, as you know, this Mass is that of the dedication of a church for the Feast of the Dedication of the Basilicas of Saints Peter and Paul today on the 18th of October of November, and it takes precedence over the Sunday. Now there are what we call the four major basilicas in Rome. There is the Basilica of St. John Lateran, which is considered the Cathedral of Rome and is commemorated on a special feast day on November the 9th, nine days ago. And then we have the Basilica of St. Mary Major, and that is commemorated on August the 5th. And today's feast commemorates the dedication of two basilicas, one built over the tomb of St. Peter and the other built over the tomb of St. Paul. These two apostles were very closely associated, and in fact, they ended up being martyred on the same day, on June 29th in the year 67. St. Peter, as you know, crucified upside down because he said he was unworthy to die in the same manner as our Lord, right side up. And St. Paul was beheaded being a Roman citizen. Constantine, after the church was granted her liberty to build churches and to function publicly without fear of being persecuted and the Christians put to death, Constantine, the emperor, himself had a basilica, a church, built over the tomb of St. Peter on the Vatican Hill and also over the tomb of St. Paul uh, outside the walls of Rome. Later on, these two basilicas needed to be rebuilt. And you know that St. Peter's Basilica is really the grandest church in all the world. A magnificent church, the dome being designed by Michelangelo, the famous Bernini columns, etc. And it is absolutely massive and indeed fitting to be a church over the spot where St. Peter, the Prince of the Apostles, is buried. So we celebrate the dedication of these churches and the feast or the mass for the dedication of a church reminds us of the dignity of a church. Because in a Catholic church, properly decorated and blessed, our Lord is present in the tabernacle. It is his house. And we remember the time that our Lord went into Jerusalem and was very angry because he found people who were buying and selling things in the temple. And he drove them out of the temple. And he said, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So this incident shows us our Lord's righteous zeal for the defense, protection of his father's house and his anger against those who desecrated the house of God. But that was the temple. And remember that the temple did not have the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Our churches, even the smallest chapel, the humblest church, is truly the house of God. And the Mass... By that I mean the proper parts of this Mass are very beautiful, so I hope that you are reading them in your, in your Missal and reflecting upon these selections from Scripture. And one of them is the introit for this Mass, and the words are, Terrible is this place. It is the house of God and the gate of heaven, and it shall be called the court of God. Those words are taken from the book of Genesis, and they describe they are words said by Jacob after he was given the vision of a ladder going up to heaven with angels of God going up and down this ladder, bringing down God's graces to men and ministering to men and then going back to God. And he was struck by this vision. And he said those words, this is the house of God in the gate of heaven. He realized that was the holy place where he had that vision. Also, we read in the Old Testament about the dedication of the temple. And the dedication of the temple by Solomon was so grand an occasion 
that thousands of victims were sacrificed and the priests were praying and Solomon himself asked God that whoever prayed in that temple, that his prayer would be heard. And a cloud came down from heaven and rested over the temple. And the people were struck with fear and reverence and they fell down on their faces, those who were present, at this display of God himself accepting this building, this temple, as his house. So again, we reverence the house of God. What a privilege it is to clean the house of God and to be able to come and visit the house of God, to adorn it, to have any part in caring for the house of God. But let us remember also always to behave, to comport ourselves with reverence, with proper decorum in the house of God. And is not this a sure sign that the Novus Ordo is not from God. If you look at the new churches that have been built since Vatican II, in the spirit of Vatican II, ugly, empty, and mundane buildings that look sometimes like gymnasiums, very lacking the beautiful statues and other adornments that we have in the church, and in fact, we could say that the, the beautiful churches that still remain were built before Vatican II and just haven't been completely, entirely changed. So yes, there are some of those that still retain some beauty and architecture and artwork and statues and so forth, but that's from, again, true Catholicism before Vatican II. So we do all that we can as we acquire church buildings to adorn them and to remember that they are truly the house of God, that our Lord is there present in the tabernacle. Now in the gospel for this mass, we have a story of a man named Zacchaeus who wanted to see our Lord but because he was short of stature, climbed up into a tree so that when our Lord passed underneath the tree, he could at least look down and see him. And what was his surprise? when our Lord stopped right under him and said, Zacchaeus, come down, for today I must dwell in thy house. And as we read in the gospel, he was overjoyed that our Lord would choose his home, he who was a publican, a sinner, and how contrite he was. He was so filled with joy, he resolved then and there to completely change his life and to amend whatever was defective. But our Lord dwelt in the home of Zacchaeus just for one night. But he dwells within our hearts, within us, every time we receive him in Holy Communion. And how we should be like Zacchaeus. We should say, Lord, if I have offended anyone, I restore him fourfold. I amend. I make aton atonement or amendment for anything I have done astray because you come into my heart. So if Zacchaeus changed his life completely because our Lord entered his house, how much more ought we to amend our lives and live truly good Christian lives because our Lord deigns to come into us in Holy Communion, to allow us to receive him. And in that case, our heart, our body, is like the temple of our Lord, like the church where our Lord dwells during that time that we have received him in Holy Communion. So these are just some of the thoughts that we should reflect upon as we offer this beautiful mass of the dedication of a church, reflecting upon the house of God, how we should appreciate it, and how we should especially give thanks to God that we are privileged to come into his presence, and not only to be in his presence, but even receive him in Holy Communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.